Christmas came early. Creality, who are famous for their 3D printers, have reached out to me asking to do a video, a sponsored video, on their new Falcon 2 laser engraver. And the reason why I use these air quotation marks is because Falcon 2 is a 40 watt laser. That is not an engraver, that is a laser cutter. Anyway, be it an engraver, be it a cutter, it doesn't matter. What matters is that I can finally make something that I was dreaming of making for a long, long time. So right here, right in this area here, I want a shelf, a, not a bookshelf, like a horizontal, horizontal shelf, which would hold all of my, all of my camera equipment. The camera that you see here, Obsbot uh, Tail Air, very good camera, link in the video description below, as well as my lenses and all other stuff, tripods if you will. So we would have this kind of a parametric, computational design driven, flowy bookshelf here with some ferns kind of connecting to it and climbing on top of it. So this, this little fern that I have would also be able to um, grow upwards because now it's kind of just dangling there, right? That's, that's the plan. So back to the, to the idea. So you see, um, I, I always wanted to try making this kind of organic furniture in the red right here at full scale and having a laser that has a bed size of 400 by 415 millimeters and also a laser that can cut 12 millimeter plywood like it's nothing, this makes it possible. So I'm super excited. So let me show you what I, what I came up with. So I've modeled out this snail looking thing, right? And then I used grasshopper to rationalize it all into a waffle structure. And let me just show you how it looks after rationalization, like that, right? I think it looks pretty neat and I'm really curious to see how it turns out. Oh, and I also measured out all of the like camera bodies and like of the radii as well as the lenses and so on. And I made these uh, cutting objects to carve into the shelf uh, so that the cameras sit a little bit deeper in the shelf. Maybe that's going to make it a little bit more minimal when you're sitting on the couch and just, you know, look, looking at the shelf itself. We'll see. We'll see if it works. And if you're curious about this kind of a sub modeling paired with um, computational design, then check out my SEBD architecture live streams as well as all my grasshopper tutorials to learn more. Also, all of the files, including these and everything that I do on this channel, are available for Patreon supporters. So, if you're if you just want to download these, I will clean them up, I promise. Uh, but if you want to download these and check for yourself how I made this, um, yeah, support the channel on Patreon, you're gonna get it for free. Right, either way, for this project we'll be using 5.5 millimeter plywood because we can, yay, laser, yet again, um, that I have ordered but still has not arrived yet right? But that's fine because there are two important problems that we need to solve beforehand. So problem number one being I live in an apartment and that, ladies and gentlemen, right there is a fire alarm, a smoke detector if you will. And it's very sensitive. Ask me how I know. So we will need to figure something out. I think I will move the laser to the university at which I work. So yeah, let's do that. Problem number two being, this is the only room in the, in the school, in the university that has the possibility of actually holding a laser. And that, uh, th that right there is a, is a fire alarm. But don't you worry. I've got this under control. We have our laser right here. The first idea was to have the laser right here in this area. But the problem was that if we open up a window to let the fumes out, 
this is how far the window opens, right? So it's very hard to feed some sort of a pipe or anything like that through the window. And even if we managed to do so, because of the hood, the extraction hood that we have here in the room, the room is slightly pressurized and all of the fumes would just kind of go right back in. But then I figured it all out. What you see under here is a fume filtering system, right? That the yoink old laser right there has used. And with that uh, fume filtering system, now we can have this, this bad boy anywhere in the room. Planning on buying a laser cutter, I strongly suggest getting these two important add-ons. First one being the protective cover that you can get from Creality's website. I will put a link in the video description below. This really prevents from the leakage of the fumes into the space. And the second one being the actual filtering system. And those can be bought from third-party vendors. There's plenty of them out there. And they will cost you around half of the price of the printer being around $800. Two of these, you can just have your laser cutter anywhere uh, where you want, even in your bedroom if, you, if that's your thing. So now with everything set up, let me show you the plan. We still have plywood coming in. Um, it's on its way. So we're going to be testing with the cardboard. Three millimeter corrugated cardboard. The, the laser should chew through this as if it's nothing. And we will use that information gathered from the model, the cardboard model, to see if and there are any issues there that we should address before cutting the actual plywood model later on. For the cutting, I'm using Lightburn. It's a software that you do need to pay for, but it's like $60 and you buy it only once and just, you know, kind of have it. Remember the, when that was a thing? Yeah, good times. Anyway. It's all plug and play from there. I just get the drawings in as DXF files, position them on the bed. I choose the speeds and power for the cut and also engrave layers and we're ready to go. In terms of the laser itself, it's super easy to use. Just shove your material onto the bed, adjust the height of the laser head with the given gauge and these two thumb screws. Align the sheet, zip up and just start cutting. This is one fast machine. All of this took half an hour to cut. That's two or maybe even three times faster compared to other lasers of this category. Also, I would like to note some of the features that I'm honestly impressed by. First, you have these three monitoring systems that are indicated on the laser head. Airflow, letting you know if there is air being pushed through. Lens, letting you know if your laser glass has fogged up and needs cleaning and then flame monitoring. If there is a fire, the system will immediately shut down. Very nice. I have mentioned airflow monitoring. And yep, this laser does come with an air assist unit that blows air during cutting, which really helps with the scorch mark cleanup. You get less of those, you know, uh, what's the word? Crispy, crispy edges. And as an added bonus, your laser head doesn't get messed up by the smoke. There's also a possibility to drop down the power to 22 watts while gaining much more precision. Since I'm dealing with relatively large furniture piece, I'll stick to the 40 watt setting, but in the future, when I'm cutting small scale architectural models, being able to cut more precisely is, again, really nice. So after around 30 minutes of cutting and one hour of assembly, here it is. Here's our baby boy. So there are issues with this model that I will be uh, fixing for the final uh, cut with the plywood. Uh, first one being the, it's apparently unnecessary for us to have two um, spines going through the middle. It's enough with just one spine. Um, the second issue being, or not an issue, things that we will correct being if I were just to remove one of these, there we go. You can see that in this cross section right here, this part becomes very flimsy. And that is because I am using, it's not glued. Oh no, it's not glued. Um, I will be using incisions in the back 
so that I can place fasteners here to fasten to the wall, right? So we're cutting at this angle and we're cutting at this angle and the two cuts are just too close to each other and they're too flimsy. So I need those two cuts to be apart. Besides that, um, I do like how this looks like. I think the proportion the proportion is quite good and on the wall it's gonna look pretty nice. Let's check it out. All right, so that's that wraps it up for now. Um, I'm going to wait for the plywood. Once that comes in, we will continue our video. It's been three weeks. So for three weeks, I've been waiting for the plywood and cutting the plywood and figuring out that I cut the wrong file and then recutting the plywood. It was the whole journey. And at the end of the day, what matters is the final product which is not what I'm holding right here. Actually, the final product is this. Oh, eh. There we go. ta -da. The bookshelf. Or well, not a bookshelf, a shelf. Um, is made. I will make a quick uh, assembly video or cut for you to see how this whole has been assembled, but it's basically the same thing as the cardboard copy of it. So now on to the mounting of it actually. The mounting part is going to be a little bit tricky because this is no drywall. This is like, wait, it is a drywall. <laughs> I never checked. Huh, doesn't matter. Uh, we will be drilling in holes. We will be tapping and we will be using this little do that right here as our in-between joint. So I'll explain first what, what is it that I'm holding here and then we'll continue on with the actual drilling. So it's a piece of wood with some 3D printed parts that are on it. And basically the way it assembles, the way it assembles with the model is pretty simple. Uh, you have this groove right here and this uh, piece of wood just simply slides in, or this in-between joint just slides in like so, right? And due to the taper here in the top, it will not fall. The, the, the object or the, sorry, not the object, the shelf will not fall because the taper, because of the taper. All right, so that's the, that's the principle of it. And now the question is, how do we connect this piece of wood to the wall? And there are two options. The option number one being we drill through the wood. Let's place it there. Option number one is we drill through the wood right into the, into the wall. That's possible, but a little bit of, if I make a mistake, then we're in big trouble. Option, option number two 
is using these brackets right here. I, I'm not sure how they're called, like flesh joints or something like that. It's basically two pieces of metal that come together, right? Like so. The problem is that they leave like a five millimeter gap that, you know, is going to give an offset from the wall, which is maybe not that big of a deal. We'll, we'll see. I'll probably use these, right? So the first thing to do is to actually drill a few holes here and connect everything. And that will not require my commentary, so we're going to kind of skip right ahead to that. Here it is. I am I am a little bit uh, a little bit tired. With these kind of projects, I always learn one thing. No matter how simple the initial idea, the concept is, you can never anticipate how many small things you'll need to take care of without actually building the thing. And I guess the same thing applies to architecture or any any field, huh? Anyway, there's so many moments or things that I would have done differently. For example, the mounting of the wall to the wall, that's way overdone. Having two floating joints makes sure that the shelf always sits snugly, but it's definitely too much of a hassle for this kind of work. Also, I made the carved recesses for my camera bodies way too small. But that's not much of an issue because it looks nicer with small knickknacks that we have around the house instead of plastic camera bodies right in the middle of the living room. And all in all, I am, I am happy with how it looks. <laughs> um, a little slug. And thank you, thank you Creality for providing the Falcon 2 laser. I now have at least, I would say around 40 hours of cutting experience with that laser. And I have to say there wasn't a moment where it misbehaved. If I had to mention one thing though, I would like to see the fume hood improved. There should be a pro version of this fume hood with rigid construction, proper filters and so on. As it is right now, it does the job but it's a little bit flimsy at times. But in this case, if we go back to the laser itself, I can't really talk about really long-term use. But not having a single hiccup in two months, that's honestly a first. The link to it is in the video description. Check it out, it's, it's good. And we're done. We are done. I'm going to sleep now. I need it. And then we're off to the next one. I'll see ya. Bye.